Hello there once more and thank you for joining me uh, for another little talk. It's always good to have a conversation to share things uh, together perhaps that might be edifying or to give some news or whatever and so it's good. I was um, I live in the Blue Mountains in Australia in New South Wales of course uh, in a town called Wentworth Falls and like most country towns or regions uh, in different places around the world uh, there's a local newspaper and the local newspaper is known as the Blue Mountains Gazette and for some 32 years now or more I've been writing to that paper and sending in letters and so far over that 32 year period uh, my score of writing has been about one letter per month being published so that's not too bad 32 years of writing uh, one letter per month 350 letters or so and it's the thing that I do, it's the thing I enjoy to do and a lot of other people like to write letters of papers and it's a way you can, you know, give your opinion on something or uh, your likes or dislikes and other people sometimes reply and some argue uh, others agree sometimes with, uh, of, of what, what you might say and so over those years I've uh, developed some sort of a reputation and I went to a Facebook page recently of the Blue Mountains Gazette no, actually, I'll go back a bit. I went there a couple of months ago and just made a comment on something on the Facebook page. And when I went back in recently, there was another comment by someone saying, Oh, no, uh, this person's found uh, the Gazette face page. And then I clicked on another little link where it says, uh, Read more comments. And there's another chap says, Richard, you know, uh, the most hateful and judgmental person in all the mountains and then I gave my web page and then a comment came up later no thank you I don't want to you know help a page you know that's uh, hosted by uh, a racist uh, and a bigot and I thought to myself it's interesting isn't it how people perceive others uh, even if they don't know them and I suppose I could take a, um, uh, a what a sarcastic approach or a cynic approach and say well uh, I must be a racist because I've been called one so therefore I must be one uh, I must be a bigot because I've been told I'm a bigot therefore uh, I must be a bigot uh, I must be hateful and most judgmental in all the Blue Mountains because I've been told that I'm most hateful and most ju judgmental in all the Blue Mountains but why is that? Well recently over the past months I wrote a letter uh, to the Blue Mountains Gazette whereby I gave my opposition uh, to the notion of same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriage some months ago became legal in New Zealand and there's a move in Australia to have the same thing uh, made law. And so I gave my voice, my opinion in the Blue Mountains Gazette. I said I believe that the idea came from minds that are reprobate minds for Paul the Apostle mentions in Romans 1 that God has given people over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are unseemly and it speaks about men lusting after men going after their own kind and women also turning away from the natural use uh, under their own kind as well so we're looking at sodomites and uh, lesbians we'll use the whole framework of homosexuals you know to cover it so I voiced my opposition to that and then for some weeks later there were letters coming into the Gazette calling me all sorts of names abusing me all sorts of things indeed and I never ever attacked people on a personal level I was speaking about the, uh, uh, the matter of same-sex marriage and I wrote back and you know one letter said you know this is an enlightened age you know and Morel's a bigot that's my name Richard Morel he's a bigot and uh, you know he's a Bible basher etc etc there are all sorts of comments like that uh, you know biased and a racist and they tossed in all these allegations against me but they didn't seem to give any good reason or argument for same-sex marriage or for indeed changing the marriage act uh, under Australian law uh, which states it's male and female or man and woman anyhow apart from that I I wrote back and I said let me give you an example uh, of your enlightenment from 2000 years ago and uh, I quoted an, an ancient writer and uh, I pointed out that he was saying horrible conduct, terrible spectacle 
of men playing the part of women and women playing the role of husbands and wives at the same time. Uh, wicked conduct. And I said, there's an example of your enlightenment from 2,000 years ago. Well, that went down like a lead brick. And the next week they were on my back again, abusing me again and again. Anyway, I wrote another letter simply saying, well, what I did, I had the right to do because there were wars fought, two world wars were fought for the freedom of speech, and I had the right of freedom to give my opinion, and that's all I did regarding same-sex marriage. And I told those people who were saying things against me, perhaps they should take a long look in the mirror at themselves. Anyhow, the article, or the matter, or the subject, uh, has now ceased in the letters column of the Blue Mountains Gazette, and there's been a lull, last few weeks have been nothing by myself, nor has it been anything by anyone else, but I have intended and have sent in letters regarding now the passing uh, of, uh, by, by the Federal Government of Australia, and particularly by uh, Julia Gillard, in her leaving the Prime Ministership, one of her last acts was to put the stamp on a discounted abortion pill, so that it's on what's known as the PBS, it's a pharmaceutical benefit scheme, where medicines that are expensive can be bought uh, for low cost. And so Julia Gillard uh, put the, gave that the thumbs up and that went through Parliament. So now we have what I refer to as a discounted murder pill because I'm also against abortion. So when that letter gets published, if it does, uh, then I'll probably be called a bigot again and a racist and hateful and all that because that's how people work. So therefore I must be a bigot and uh, I must be hateful. But I don't mind being called a bigot so much because... I have written a poem that I wrote many years ago uh, called Bigot, and it goes a bit like this. It's called Bigot. I know I'm a bigot. That's how I want to be. And I shall be a bigot throughout eternity. The reason I'm a bigot, and dogmatic too, is because I shall not change from my point of view. Now, my point of view is this. From it I cannot sway. Only Yeshua leads to God. There is no other way. Yeshua also said this. And I have taken it to my life, and it saves me from all strife, because the words of Yeshua were, I am the way, the truth, the life. Now this does make a difference, because in the Christ I'm free, I no longer listen to this world's philosophy, you know what? This might make me seem a bigot. Maybe it does, indeed. But, you know, I really ain't. What I am is just a plain old saint. You see, when Christians take the position of saying that the only way to God is through Yeshua, i.e. Jesus, people don't like it. They want to follow all sorts of paths, and the end of those paths is the way of death. But should you stand up, and I stand up through the Blue Mountains Gazette. Long ago I thought, you know, I used to preach in churches, and I was in different uh, places, had opportunity to preach. But here is a congregation of 70,000 people. 70,000 people each week, uh, or that the, the, the Gazette, Gazette is published. Let's say, you know, 10,000 don't bother reading the local paper. Let's say another 10,000 really don't read the letters column. Now that leads a few, doesn't it? Let's bring it down to say 20,000 that read the letters column. Well, you know there's 20,000 members, I've got, haven't I, as a congregation out there in the world, so that the people outside the church are being informed. Sure, I'm stern when I write things. Abortion is murder, that's it. There's no argument, there's no debate. Abortion is murder. Same-sex marriage is wickedness and immorality beyond compare, a mockery of what marriage is. And so that needs to go to people. But I just wanted to share with you that. And uh, as I said, you can go to my website at any time. That's www.richard-2782.net. Okay? That's wwwrichard dash 2782.net and you'll find studies and poetry. Thank you for listening and I hope that you're encouraged and I know that there are many people out there among you who agree with what I've said and understand what I've said, okay? 
but we are in a continual battle. The battle is not with flesh and blood, as Paul says, it's with spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. There are spiritual powers moving over different lands, and uh, they influence the decisions, I believe, made by governments, and they influence the people that are wicked, they push them forward, etc., etc. So, the, so we're wrestling against spiritual powers in the heavenly places. It takes the whole armour of God to be clothed with, we don't back off. But translating and coming out into the world of humanity, when we speak forth or we write, then that's what we do, because that's how we speak and we move in that world that, in that way. I pray to the Lord with a mind, I pray of the Spirit, and this victory comes. But Christians need to stand up and show the world exactly who they are or what they are and that they are not put up with nor abide the wickedness that is around. So the Lord bless each of you who are believers. If there's any here or not, I pray that you become believers because life-changing is life-changing from the Lord above, from the Lord of hosts, from the Lord uh, Yeshua. And one salient thing is, no matter what people argue, no matter what they say, all their arguments are wiped out completely because the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. And it's interesting that Yeshua did say, you know, and, uh, well, actually, it was in a story that, that, that Yeshua told about Lazarus and the rich man and uh, Father Abraham. And Abraham made the statement because the rich man said, send me back that I might warn people. And Abraham said, if they do not believe the law or the prophets, neither shall they believe, though one should rise from the dead. And isn't it particular and peculiar that Yeshua is risen from the dead? Christ is risen. And yet they will not believe. The Lord bless each of you and thank you very much for listening. Thank you indeed.